a big black fist in my hand. A plucker. Power to the people. <laughs> so there I am, alongside my magical fairy friend, parading around the school hall. Black and proud. Our story has so many different threads, and it's been uh, quite interesting to actually start to pursue those different cultural lines that make us mm. who we are. Mum had, came, came over to Australia when she was seven from Holland. Our grandfather was quite amazing in a lot of respects. For instance, when they first came out to Australia, in, he actually came a couple of years ahead of, of our grandmother and, right. and the, the daughters, mum and his, his two sisters. And, and basically it was to kind of get himself settled before he then sent the others um, to follow. Our father, who was born in Queensland but is of Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander heritage, basically left Queensland at a young age when he met our mother. I think he was sitting playing guitar in a, in a bath type of cafe thing here and this guy came up to him and said, oh, have you ever thought about acting? I work for the ABC and hence he got kind of on this whole path of acting. He's since gone on he was then kind of washed into the tide of all the black power movement that was happening around the 60s and 70s, moved to Sydney, established um, uh, the early National Black Theatre Company. So he's, ex he's very well known through, certainly through the Indigenous community and, and more broadly in the arts. Basically, Mum was at arts college. She'd done one year. And when she tells the story, she talks about it was basically her opportunity to get out of home. And about four of them would, had decided that they were going to go on a holiday, drove all the way up to Cairns. Anyway, somewhere around there, Dad tells the story. He remembers seeing her walking past his, their, their kind of little hut on the beach where they were staying. Um, Dad was uh, married <laughs> at the time with two sons, two little, little boys. And, uh, and I think the story he tells years later is, uh, you know, they, it wasn't such happy times. They were always fighting and arguing. Anyway, for whatever reason, it was meant to be that him and mum <laughs> decided to elope. Back in early 60s, Queensland, it was extremely not okay for a, a black and white, a mixed couple. So basically they got seriously harassed by the police at every stop along the way. Stories like, you know, they'd be pulled into the turn up into town and straight away the police would be there to greet them, take them to the police station, empty out the suitcase all over the ground. And I very much think that the, going back to the mum and dad both being outsiders in their own experience, I'm sure that is exactly what they saw Put in each together. other. I think they very much... On, a, on some innate level, really understood what it was like to be an outsider. Yeah, very much. I, my, I know mum, to this day, still says, I will never feel like this is my home. Oh, that's a funny story. Mum, yeah, and, mum his first introduction to my father, this black man, was mum coming up to him and she goes, oh, I'd like you to meet my boyfriend and I'm, we're five months pregnant. And apparently there was deathly silence and they all just stood there going, waiting for the response and then after a while, a while, he says, well, I guess it's too late for an abortion then. <laughs> <laughs> he actually came to really like Dad because Dad's <laughs> such a charmer. Dad was always singing, one of those, people don't do that much in this country, but where you, people just, the, the sort of people that would just get on the piano or get on the guitar and just start singing. Um, was very much our father, and he he was we had that instilled in us. So that we were from a very early age. I can't even think how yeah, long it was, it was. I was the one on the guitar, and, and then we'd sing Ooh. harmonies. Yeah, so absolutely. Been, been singing as long as very for as long, long as we can remember. But some of the songs in the show in Sisters of Gelam. One of them is when, when the funeral is on, which is actually a song that was sung. We found out later, that's another story. Um, we found out that it actually was sung at the funeral and we were up visiting our aunties to try and get some language. And um, they were teaching us a song and then we watched the footage of our father's funeral. And then there was a Dutch song. That's right, we had to have so language songs from both <laughs> sides, which we didn't know, we had to learn. 
<laughs> but we had, I heard, 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 heard mum singing it, yeah. but certainly hadn't, hadn't learnt it. There was a song that mum and dad always sang together. So at one point right. we kind of jump up and sing this act like mum and dad ridiculous song. Yes. But that that they, they you know two people sing off each other and one of those kind of old style humor humor songs. Just one more dance. Essentially, it's it's three storylines, and those three storylines try and encapsulate the three kind of primary themes, which is basically the journey of these two sisters going from Melbourne all the way up to the Torres Strait. So they're on a journey back to country, so kind of um, tracing their roots and knowing where they come from. Uh, so that's obviously the one side of the family. The second storyline is this, a traditional Torres Strait Islander story um, of this boy called Gellum. And his story is, a, is um, a story of, which basically is like a creation story for the Torres Strait Islands, forms the islands of the Torres Strait Islands. Uh, the third storyline is a story that we call the Little Dutch Girl. And that's obviously embodies mum's story. And her story is this very simplistic story of this little Dutch girl who, who travels many, many miles over the oceans and finally comes to this country. And once she arrives, she looks like, oh my God, because it's dry, it's hot, it's disgusting it's and ugly. Flies. It's flies. It's flies. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, who could live here? And this black man comes to her and says, look, don't, don't be too hasty in wanting to go home and gives her a, a seed to plant a tree. Um, and the tree is, is the Wongai tree. And the story with the Wongai is that, that when you eat the fruit of the Wongai, you will always have a longing to be at that place. So uh, anyway, she plants the tree, she grows the tree, and she's counting, ah, waiting for this tree to grow so she can get home. Um, but of course she tastes the fruit. She knows it. And she's finds herself, home. after all these years, realising that she actually sees the country quite differently and has become quite accustomed to its beauty and sees its beauty for what it is. So anyway, it was just, so these three storylines basically sum us up. Oh, yeah.